away from it. Allah doesn't mention the object from because it's understood everything. You turn away from it if it's turning you away from Allah. And you flee towards one and only one. And that is the source of your protection. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah. Flee from everything else because it's going to destroy you. It's going to destroy you unless you find protection. And the one entity that you will find protection in is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you look at these verbs and the nuances and how precisely each one is used in different surahs and different contexts, Wallahi, it's not possible for a human being to compose a book over 23 years and such a small aspect of this is put in there. It's not something a human can do. This is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the combined understanding, the subtle and yet explicit imagery that we all get when we read these verses without even knowing we get them. Allah is telling us when it comes to this dunya, be casual, be easy. Yes, go and do what you need to do. Walk around, peruse around, travel the world, but don't get crazy. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rush, run, flee for your lives. That's what you need to be saved. What a profound reality of the use of Quranic verbs. And wallahi brothers and sisters, this is just one simple example of the entire complexity of this book. Wallahi, I say to you, this book, it is a mu'jiza that we cannot even appreciate. It is a miracle that we cannot even appreciate. Listening to it increases our iman. Reciting it solidifies our iman. Being in its presence brings us comfort. Even if we don't understand its words, it lifts our spirits up and causes our, our you know, anger, our depression, our issues of irritation to go away. Everything about the Quran is nothing but barakah. And that's why Allah says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun. The kitab is mubarak. This book is blessed. Its recitation is blessed. Its presence is blessed. That's why you need to have wudu to touch it. That is why it is a part of our iman and aqeedah to respect the physical book. That is why there's nothing wrong with putting it high on our shelves. It is a part of iman. The problem is we don't pull it down to read it. But we should put it high on our shelves and pull it down to read it. There's nothing wrong with venerating the book of the Quran, the Mus'af, because it is worthy of being venerated because it is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything about the book is mubarak. And so we appreciate, we thank, we praise Allah for having given us this book. And Allah praises Himself for having revealed this book. Allah is worthy of being praised because He has revealed this book. Alhamdulillahi anzara ala abdihi al-kitab. Allah is praising Himself for revealing the Qur'an. So if Allah is worthy of being praised because of the Qur'an, how blessed and fortunate are we to have the Qur'an. So brothers and sisters, before I hand over to our next um, speaker and presenter, uh, briefly as you're aware, I was in Turkey literally two days ago. And subhanAllah, whatever we do there, it's not enough for our brothers and sisters there. So one of the things Allah tells us, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ Race one another in good deeds. And no matter how much we give, we're not going to eliminate what is happening there. No matter how many charities are there, more needs to take place. But the goal that Allah will ask us is not, did you eliminate every single hungry person? But Allah will ask us, how many hungry did you feed? What impact did you cause? And it really hurt me, brothers and sisters. And again, I'm sharing with you the reality. We came with, I don't even know how many hundreds of boxes. We had four truckloads. I have the pictures, maybe you'll see some of the videos. Four truckloads. And when our guides had counted the families in that area, they had counted a specific number. The next day we came and another hundred something people had come because they have nowhere else to go. And so our truck loads were not sufficient for the people there. Wallahi, it was so painful. What are you gonna do when they're hungry people? You have the food and you couldn't give food to everybody. I can't express to you how mixed emotions. On the one hand, you're doing so much. On the one hand, tears of joy. On the one hand, literally, 
elderly people and men and women and you know we even gave toys to the kids maybe inshallah you'll see the video you know we're giving toys to the kids and this little girl six year old girl came up to me with a smile she hugged me she goes ya ammu uncle you know you made today an Eid for me alhamdulillah you know these small things right and then other people come waiting in line and it finishes and it's just 30, 40, 50 dollars for a full box for a week or two. You know, alhamdulillah, our money, our dollars go a long way there, you know? It's very painful, brothers and sisters. So I urge all of you to look at the reality of what's going on, to understand that alhamdulillah, look, all charities are good, and alhamdulillah, whichever ones you give us all good, but right now, we have one that I'm involved with. I was there literally with Reed Foundation, saw what they're doing, alhamdulillah. And one thing about Reed Foundation, which is really amazing, I love this about it, it's not just a humanitarian uh, uh, agency, its actual focus is educating orphans and children. Read, iqra. And as a part of what they do, they also give humanitarian aid, but the actual focus is education. Today, we're not going to be fundraising for education. It's going to be for our brothers and sisters in Turkey and Syria. But please, log on to what Reed is doing. See the good work is doing. 500 schools around the world, you know, primarily for uh, socioeconomically underprivileged children. Percentage of them are orphans, refugees. But today, inshallah, we're doing a special fundraiser for Turkey and for our Syrian and Turkish brothers and sisters. And by the way, both Turkish and uh, Syrian, because where we are, you know, Ghazi Antep, Shadi for other places, majority of them actually are Syrian refugees. Majority of them, but they're also uh, Turkish over there. So inshallah, with that, uh, we'll hand it over to, uh, who am I handing it over to? Hafiz Abu Muthi Oh, Imam John, mashallah, mashallah, all the way from Washington, D.C. Alhamdulillah, we hand it over to the speaker. SubhanAllah, it's a good thing you came after me because now, Alhamdulillah, you're going to raise the bar and take it all the way there. So Alhamdulillah, mashallah, Imam Johari. MashaAllah, such a pleasure to see you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.